This video is, an, is going to be an instruction on how to use, uh, how to conduct point sampling in order to estimate the basal area and number of trees per acre. Basal area and number of trees per acre are two metrics that are important to help us understand how much competition there is in the forest for sunlight. Uh, the number of trees per acre is also useful in situations, for example, where we want to estimate the number of taps per acre. So a maple producer may want to know how many sugar maple trees there are per acre uh, before they go to the effort of installing a tubing system or considering a bucket system. There are two tools or devices that we can use to measure the basal area and trees per acre. One is a prism. What we're going to use is a device called an angle gauge. So here's an angle gauge. The way the angle gauge works is you hold that angle gauge 25 inches from your eye and you look at the tree at four and a half feet above ground. If that tree completely fills the window, then we count that tree as an in tree. Now as I'm using this video camera, the video camera is closer to the angle gauge than my eye is. Uh, my eye is 25 inches from the angle gauge. So when I look at the, uh, look at the tree through the angle gauge, uh, what's important is what my eye sees and not what the camera sees. So it's, it may, it may, there may be some discrepancy between what I'm saying and what you're seeing on the video. We'll start with this tree uh, that happens to be marked with a green ribbon. We're in a research forest and so most forests and woodlands don't have trees with green ribbons. But this is our starting point. We need to have a tree that's sufficiently unique that we know where to start and where to stop. So what I'll do is I'll, as I spin my circle and I'll look at individual trees, I'll make note of and record in my data sheet an estimate of the diameter of the tree. So we need to count the tree and we need to know its diameter at breast height or diameter at four and a half feet above ground. Uh, after, I've, after I've completed my circle, I'll go back and individually measure trees with a scale stick to ensure that I've correctly estimated that diameter. So as we spin this circle, we have uh, a sugar maple tree, the one with the green ribbon, and we'll say that's about 13 inches. Tree number two is a beech, and we'll say that that has about 11 inches. And then I just continue to look at individual trees as I spin the circle. So there's a, a tree that I have to step to the side. I'll stay the same distance from the tree and I'll look at it. And as I look through the window with my eye, that large tree in the distance is in. That's a cucumber magnolia and we'll say that's about 30 inches and I just continue to spin the circle. So there's, I was just checking by eye, that large tree in the background when I hold the camera 25 inches from the angle gauge and, and by my eye as well, that tree is in. So now we're up to four trees and I'd estimate the diameter of that. That's a yellow poplar. I'm gonna say that's also about 30 inches Sugar maple, tree number five, is eight inches. There's six, and I'd be recording, for each of these, I'd be recording an estimate of diameter. There's tree seven, there's tree eight. There's another tree to the right of tree number eight. You can see it, but we, we can't see the whole tree. What the angle gauge is telling us is for a given distance from a tree, whether or not we count that tree. We can offset and keep the same distance from a tree and reevaluate that tree. So if we look to the tree that's to the right of tree number eight, and I'll zoom in. So that's the tree we're looking at. This was tree eight with the ribbon. There's a tree that we're evaluating and that's too small, it doesn't fill the window. So we know that that's not an in tree. So I'll go back to my starting point. We have eight trees. Here's nine and 10, that pair of sugar maples. We continue to look. Tree 11, offset again. Tree 12, 
tree 13, tree 14. And I continue to look at trees, assessing which ones fill the window and which ones don't. So that tree fills the window, that's tree 15, and then we're back to our starting point. So we have 15 trees. The basal area gauge, the angle gauge, you can see that, hopefully, basal area factor BAF 10 means that each tree represents 10 square feet of basal area. We counted 15 trees, so at this point we have 150 square feet of basal area. That, uh, when we when we will look at a stocking chart, that's this is a woodland that is fully stocked. It has a high basal area, which means that it has a high crown closure. So as we look up into the canopy, we can see that there's a lot of crown closure. There is um, a high level of competition for sunlight. Each tree also then is weighted by a coefficient and the coefficient gives us our estimate of the number of trees per acre. As you look through the woods you see you see that there are numerous small diameter trees but yet we only counted a few small diameter trees in our point sample. In order to accurately estimate the number of small trees per acre we multiply them by a large coefficient. By the same token we counted several large diameter trees but there are not a lot of large diameter trees in the woods. So the coefficient for the large diameter trees is going to be small. And we'll look at uh, the process for doing that. So once you've completed this point sample, you do some uh, fairly simple mathematical computations, and you come up with an estimate of basal area and trees per acre for this point. You would repeat this process usually with one point per acre. So you would walk about 200 feet in a straight line, put in another point, and work a systematic grid through your woodlands in order to estimate the basal area and trees per acre.